All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to expand the bricks out from each other and make the game a little bit bigger so it's got some more room to maneuver. Um, so uh, we're going to do that over primarily over in MAP, in the MAP class. Now, our program is uh, was intended to not be this complicated. So uh, some of these things should be redone, like some of these classes should be re, uh, re-implemented because they're getting a little... A little bit too big and a little bit not quite clean enough and like we're having to fix things over in this that then we need to go back and over fix over in the other thing and blah 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 so um you'll sometimes experience this as a program gets more and more complicated that you may get to a stage where it feels kind of ungainly and you need to simplify all the classes now we're not going to actually do that in this case um because uh it's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial, but for those of you who want to implement these things, that's fine, and you can do it. You're not at all required to do so in the class, um, but they're just kind of for fun. So, um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna implement a between pad. So we have this horizontal pad and this vertical pad to the, defines the um, stuff around uh, our um, our map. So, in addition to a horizontal and a vertical pad, we're gonna have a between pad. So um, this will go between the bricks to kind of expand them out a little bit. And I'm just going to set this to 20. And you can play around with these values, of course. And so then we need to remember that, oh, yeah, we get the brick width and brick height by calculating, ver like, based on, in part, these paddings. So in addition to that one, we need to su subtract the value of between pad from it to get the correct width of each brick. And uh, the same thing for the value of the height of the bricks uh, because we're trying to like the brick width and brick height are defined by the overall width minus certain things like minus two times the horizontal pad divided by the column so this gets the precise width of each individual brick now we still have to use this though we're going to go down into the drawing function where uh, we actually are drawing the map and change some of that stuff so that it can get drawn correctly. Um, just a second, I'm navigating to where we do draw. And then, uh, all right. So under the draw function, or draw method, um, so this is where we're defining the width and height here. Uh, G.fillRec, this is where we finally define the actual shape when we're gonna draw it. So in addition to drawing it, uh, the number of columns times the width plus the horizontal pad, we also want to add the between pad. And we're going to do that to the, um, the uh, here also to the rows. So between pad. Um, and then uh, we are going to go over into game panel and also change something where they're doing the collision checks because we do those over in game panel. So here where we're doing the if um, if the collisions are occurring this is the row that checks for the balls and the bricks so if we need to get the correct brick X to make the collisions work and brick Y and to do that we just add um, the map plus between or plus the map the map dot between pad to both of those and that should uh, accomplish what we want to do the map dot between pad there we go and um, in addition to all that I also have gone into um, the main class and made it bigger so now it's 1024 by 768 which is kind of a standard screen size and then also, I made the ball slightly smaller, so underneath your initialization method in the ball, um, I changed certain values like the speed, I made it go faster, and the speed, the position I changed to 600 and 600, um, and let's see where, oh, one of these, oh, DX is that, and then DY is 18 and then 15 is the size, so 15 is the size of the new ball. So my game looks kind of like this, I'll show you. So it's expanded. Oh, and I made some other changes too that you can play with. But you see that the bricks are expanded and it does do some more complicated ricocheting. And also the 
ball will not get stuck on the paddle anymore like it once did, where it kind of got stuck and wouldn't go up or down. Um, uh, one other quick fix is that, uh, courtesy of Nick Howgo, the reason this set location relative to null thing wasn't working was because we were having it set the location relative to null before we defined the width and height. So you actually have to define the width and height of the pan of the frame before you set the location relative to null, and then you'll get it in the center of the screen. Okay, that's enough for this tutorial.